All right, today this is Jacob Viral. I'm gonna be showing you guys, whoever doesn't know, how to uh, clamp an amp. And in my scenario, it's gonna be two amps strapped. So I'll be in full detail on what you will need. So I personally run an iPod. You can have any music device. Uh, usually you do different frequencies. Around your peak, you'll see the most rise usually. And clamping power can get how much power you're truly getting out of your amps as well as find your rise and I will explain both in this video. So you need a device or a USB if you have one to hook to your head unit to uh, get your frequencies when you do your tests and you can do different frequencies the reason for is to find out how much power because at certain frequencies you'll have more box rise versus others. So a brief description of box rise the way I've learned is here's my box if anybody doesn't know my build so basically box rise leads to you have a current impedance rise like where your subwoofers are wired at doesn't mean that's what your amplifiers are constantly seeing so for example my amps are strapped at one ohm meaning each amp will see half ohm but with rise usually you uh depending on how your subwoofer is obscuring how much your box is flexing how big your port is how small it is the the air pressure within the box how your resonance frequency goes up and down within the frequency in the box and also it has to do with how your vehicle resonates as well so there's a lot of key factors that you really can't all really relate to without the uh, proper technology and programs and computer software to run to find out pretty much every little detail within your uh, box specs to find out what causes the uh, box rise difference because you can have the same type of box whether like if you add a little bit to it or you, sh you uh, shrink it or you uh, you expand the box like you make it a bigger box so you go from say a five and a half cube on an 18 inch subwoofer to a six and a half cube and you will notice a difference in your box rise so every box plays a key role in uh, how much power you get the more efficient your box is actually the more rise you usually get I've learned I noticed that with mine, like I actually gain more box rise when my box is built more heavy duty and more efficient. So anyway, that's my two cents on box rise. Uh, there's a lot more to it. Usually just Google's your friend, Google what's box rise and there's other videos out there for people that know more about it. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to uh, clamp an amplifier. So right I have here is a clamp meter. This is a cheap one I got at Home Depot, $40. It's not actually cheap. I mean, you can get cheap ones online for like $15, $20. Mine's a Klein Tools. And if you do buy one, if you don't already have one, get a feed hold. One that has a peak hold on it. Mine doesn't have a peak hold. This just holds whatever I currently see. So in this video, it'll be a live showing you what I'm clamping out of my two amps. So you're also going to need not just a clamp meter. A clamp meter looks like this. You uh, Basically, the clamp is going to clamp on the uh, positive speaker wire. I will go back there and explain it before I do the video. So you're going to want to have a clamp meter like this. This is going to be clamping on in the back. I'll show you. But that's how a clamp meter looks. And then a cheap multimeter or any type. Um, you can even have another second clamp meter that has a uh, multimeter reading in it. So all that's doing is showing you your voltage. And then you want some kind of device or USB that's going to show you your devices uh, for your different test tones. So whenever you do burps, uh, the reason you do test tones is so you can have a constant frequency so you can test your uh, your power you're getting in your eyes at a current uh, a current situated uh, frequency. Um, you could also do just music and then see how your rise is and how much power you're getting but your bounce is going to be up and down because every song has every second a different note so it'll be different frequencies. So before I turn my system on I'm going to go ahead and explain back here what I'm going to be doing with these. So let me bring this back here. Be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't. Hopefully I can teach you guys something here. So what I'm gonna do, I have four amps, 18,000 watts. So I say 18,000 watts, that's what I got. It's a lot of power, but how much am I really getting out of it? You'll see in this video on one of my uh, peaks that I hit, I'll show you how much. So you'll su be surprised, 18,000 watts really isn't getting what you see it is. So anyway, and this can go for anything, whether you have a 500 watt amp, a 10,000 watt amp, a 5,000, you're not truly seeing that, that amount of power. Anyway, so what you need to do, I have two amps strapped. So I'll just go ahead and look at this top one is my master amp. 
And this is my secondary amp strapped to this one. So the, the top one and the third one down are my, uh, my amps I'm going to be clamping today. They're both gain match, but I'll make another video describing gain matching later on. So my top amp and my, my uh, third amp down are my amps. My master amps on the top, my third amp down is my slave input amp. And I'll make another video describing master and slave input as well, for those that don't know. So, what you first want to do is have a clamp meter. Go ahead and clamp onto your positive speaker wire. This will be most majority of people trying to learn clamping still, I'm sure has only a single amplifier. So you're going to clamp. You're going to go ahead and turn your clamp meter on to your amperage reading. And you put it on your positive speaker wire. So I have a positive speaker wire here. With strapped amps, I have a negative running to the uh, both amps. That's just the way the amping uh, settings are for sure. strapping amps. But go ahead and clamp your positive speaker wire as close as you can to the amplifier to get the most accurate reading on your clamp meter. And make sure you have feed hold if you're gonna do that one as well. I don't have feed hold on this one, but it'll be live when you see it. And now here's my multimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and hook these up. So you have a positive and a negative, and you have a voltage reader. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my voltage reader up. I usually use 200 because that gives me the two decimal places to uh, accurate reading to see my voltage draw. So I put the same thing, you have a power positive speaker wire of your speaker to your clamp meter, as well as you have your positive multimeter connected into the terminal. I just put it into the wire there. And then the negative goes to, if usually if you have one amp, it would just be the negative and positive of your speaker output. But for me, I'm gonna put it to my, my slave amp for my strapped amp on the negative side. So there, I just pushed it into that wire so I have my power, my positive and negative hooked up to my amplifier, amplifiers, well for y'all's case, probably one amp. So you have your positive and negative speaker wire hooked up with your voltage showing out on the multimeter. Sorry if it's a little hard, it's a little bright. So you have those two. The fans are gonna be a little loud, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the power I'm doing at 2000 uh, watt, uh, not 2000, at full tilt on my uh, system and I can explain box rise on this so let me go ahead and turn my vehicle on and you guys can see how this works and I'll turn off and then you can see how I explain how I'm doing my test so let me start my vehicle and let you guys see so I'm gonna do my amps are gonna kick on but so I'm gonna do a constant frequency and I'm gonna do multiple frequencies on this and I'm gonna go ahead and do the tests over there in the back so I'm gonna do like 40 Hertz a 30 Hertz 50 and you're gonna see the difference I'm gonna not do a full tilt just because I'll explain it and I can be able to turn off the amps afterward so all right so I just got like 40 volume for you guys if you if you know your max volume where you don't clip go ahead and set it there now so we can go to the back the back end and do our tests so you remember you have, the way I hooked it up earlier is how you should have it when you're clamping it. So now I got my volume up. I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna do multiple test runs at different frequencies. So it's really hard to hear me when I'm back there, so just go ahead and watch me as I do this. I'm going to ex basically explain afterward what the numbers were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back there and I'm going to put a burp with the frequency at full tilt with the volume up and I'm going to see the numbers and I'll explain those numbers afterward. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off so it's not so loud on you guys. Sorry for that messing with y'all's ears. So, now that y'all see this, basically, 
Y'all saw the numbers go up and down. I have the amps turned down, like the volume up front, so it wasn't a lot of power draw. Y'all will see more numbers with the full tilt. Basically, this is the voltage, and this is your amperage. This amperage, mine was at between 4.5 and like 6 amperage pull draw, and this was at like 15 to 16 volts. So basically, I have about 3 ohm. So right now, I'm currently wired at 1 ohm. So I just rose to almost 3 ohm. Now, how did I figure that out? Let me go ahead and pull my calculator out and explain to you guys. And this is going to go for you guys too. All It's very simple math once you understand. So basically, I had 15, let's just say 15 to keep it basic numbers. 15, here's 15. 15 divided by 5. That's 3. So right now, I'm currently wired at 1 ohm. I'm wired at 1 ohm for the speaker output, positive and negative, as I showed you earlier how to wire. So I went from one ohm to three ohm, basically in that frequency test, showing you that my rise was two ohm rise. So I started at one ohm and ended at three. I'm gonna do that again. So I started at, this was this red, five amps, and this voltage meter read 15 volts. So 15 divided by three. That showed me my rise basically. So let me go ahead and put it up a little bit for one more final clip to show you guys exactly what I mean for one more test. So once again to remind you if y'all missed it, you want to have a clamp meter. You have to. You can't clamp your power unless you have another device other than this. This is the cheapest route to clamp your own power without like a, a SMD device or a, a clamp meter that hooks up to a computer. So you want your positive speaker wire with your clamp meter. Set your, amp, your amperage draw thing on on your clamp meter peak hold if you have one, and then set your voltage on your multimeter, and then you want to have a positive and your negative input from your multimeter to your positive and negative of your speaker output. In my case, I have strapped amps, and I explained early on that. So let me go ahead and turn my thing up, and I'll show y'all more real-world power for me on music. All right. So I got my voltage, I got it turned up some. It's gonna be loud, so I'm gonna explain afterward exactly what numbers we saw there again. And this is gonna be on music. So this way you can look at how the numbers bounce so drastically, but you can compare. All you gotta to do to find your voltage is to multiply it, and your ohm reading is just divide. So you're gonna go ahead and see what I explain. I'm about to start. Be sure to subscribe. I'm going to show y'all real world numbers and explain it afterward. I'm going to explain what numbers we see and you can see how the numbers jump. voltage is still see it goes down into the 12s you got to count for that too guys when you do your, your box rise you're gonna be like well my amp's 5,000 watts I'm only putting out 1800 on box rise so you got to count for your voltage as well for those that are still watching so I'm gonna go ahead and explain so basically I just did let me turn this off it's loud the fans so basically what I did was did a just a regular song at almost full tilt so you can see how the box rise was. So you saw these numbers. It was at like 48 to 65 volts. And this was at, uh, I think it was like 22 to 35 or something. So you can see a difference in voltage rise and amperage rise. So once again, I'm gonna just explain real quick the way you do this. So you look at your voltage and you look at your amperage. You multiply the two together to get your power. 
So let's just say my voltage and my amperage, I can't I didn't pay attention to everything. But let's just say that my numbers were, let me get a calculator up. This is all you need is a calculator, so just a phone or a calculator. So let's say I had 35, uh, I think it was like 50 volts, just a guesstimate. Uh, I'll go back in the video if I wanted to find out. So 50 volts times 15. I think it was like 15 amps. So that was like 750 RMS there, but I think I did more than that. I had of. But anyway, that was just an example. So basically, like if it was 55 divided by 15, so see, I went to 3.6 ohm. So let's say your amperage is 75 amps. I mean, not 75 amps. Let's say your voltage is 75. And then let's say your amperage is 22, just an example. So see, now my rise was to 3.4. So I hope you guys are getting it. It's very basic. You do your volt, your amperage, your voltage of your meter divided by your amperage of your clamp meter. Or you multiply the two together. So multiply your voltage and your amps for your power. You multiply for power, you divide for your ohm rating to find your box rise. That's why you do test tones for box rise. Anyway, uh, I'm done explaining. If you got questions, just comment below. I will answer everybody that's got questions. And uh, let me know what y'all think. Uh, I'm going to be making a video of full power clamping on these amps. And check out my YouTube channel for my loud system I got. But I hope I explained well on how to uh, clamp an amplifier as well as find your box rise and to see how much power you're putting out. So thanks guys. Thanks for watching.